Aloha, Richard Halverson here. Uh, this is ITS 388AL. And uh, uh, today I'm gonna go over uh, week four. And uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen here. And uh, move this out of the way. <clears throat> and uh, so I've, I've uh, got the screen opened up to our, um, our, our La Lima site here. And uh, you may notice I've made some adjustments to the schedule here. I've sort of made it a little bit uh, organized, a little bit more organized and a little bit less stressful. You can take a look at that. <clears throat> but anyway, we're going to do uh, uh, talk about data transfers and arithmetic today. So if we look at lessons we're, uh, for week four, uh, we see that we should uh, read through chapter four, uh, take, take the quiz, it's mostly a syntax type quiz, and, uh, and then uh, next video I will start, um, show you how to give you some hints on the programming assignment. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> uh, there are, um, so there are a couple of pretty good uh, videos that you can watch by the author, which uh, can um, can help. Uh, can In help this with video, I want to talk about zero and sign extension of integers. And there's another one where uh, it talks about reversing an array. In this video note, we're going to look at an application that reverses an array. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'm going to go over the slides today. So let's open up the slides. And here we are in chapter four. And uh, so uh, data transfer is addressing and arithmetic. So uh, it's, it's broken up into uh, six sections here. We're going to start with the data transfer instructions. Uh, there's um, <clears throat> uh, various aspects of the data of data transfer instructions we need to understand. Uh, we need to understand about operand types, uh, the uh, instruction operand notation, what direct memory operands, what that means. We're gonna look at the move instruction, uh, sign extension, and zero, zero extension is, is, is required because um, the 86 architecture can handle uh, various sized words, bytes, 16-bit words, 32-bit double words, and 64-bit uh, quad words. There's a nice exchange instruction that we'll look at, and then uh, what it means direct offset instructions. <clears throat> there are three kinds of operand types. Uh, we've got, um, let's see if my pen works here. Okay, so um, immediate means that the operand, uh, the, the operation, always has to do with a register and that the uh, it's it's some oper the operand can be a register to register or it can be a uh, memory to a register and uh, memory can be data memory or it can be memory right in the in the uh, the instruction itself so when it's right in the instruction itself it's immediate uh, when an operand is a register the the bunch of registers that we looked at in chapter two, I think it was, it can be a register or it can be a memory location, which is usually a data memory location. And uh, these are the different notations when we're talking about operands. Uh, and this has to do with how it is represented in the, in the documentation. So, so um, uh, operands can be 8-bit registers, which, which are, uh, any one of these A, 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 L, B, H, B, L registers, 16-bit registers, which end in X, uh, and then the 32-bit uh, registers, which start with an E for extended. <clears throat> uh, or we can just mean any kind of register. Uh, these, there are things called segment registers. Uh, th these are immediate values, which are values which are hard-coded right into the program. Uh, some they're constants usually, and then these are um, uh, some uh, many instructions can operate equally well where an op where the operand the source operand is a register or a memory location the source or destination uh, uh, a 
uh, register or, or memory location, 8 bits, 16 bits, and 32 bits. <clears throat> so, uh, so we will be uh, seeing these operand notations a lot. Okay, so for direct memory operands, uh, a direct memory operand is is named is a named reference in the storage memory. It's it's how you think of of memory ver uh, memory variables in higher level languages today. So so we, in our data memory here, we have defined uh, a memory location called var var one, and it's going to be an eight bit location, and it's going to have this value, 1, 0, hex. And so when we move var 1 into the, the AL register, which is the accumulator lower register, uh, the value that's in var 1 gets stuck into AL, as we see here. Uh, the, <clears throat> this bracketed notation here is preferred because it's not really uh, var1, the address itself, which is, this is some address in data memory. It's not really that that is going into AL. It is the, it is the, the contents or the, uh, the value that's in var1 that, that goes into AL. Hope that was clear. So, so we have a move instruction. This, this move instruction here, uh, it moves a source operand into the destination. Destination is always first, and the source is second. It's kind of like in an in, in assignment statement. We see the destination first, followed by an equal sign, followed by a source, whatever that is. Um, and uh, we will never see in the Intel x86 architecture, you'll never see a move instruction that moves from a memory location directly to another memory location. So. Uh, only one of these can be a memory location. So we can move from a memory location into a register, or we can move uh, a register into a memory location, but we cannot <clears throat> do memory to memory. We can do register to register. Also, the code segment register, that's the register that identifies the code segment in memory, uh, uh, cannot be a destination for a move instruction, neither can the instruction pointer uh, extended instruction pointer or the regular instruction pointer, uh, uh, they cannot be the destination of a move instruction either. Obviously, if you're writing the instruction pointer, you're doing a jump instruction. And the, the uh, code segment is, the problem with that is that you're executing out of the code segment. So if you all of a sudden change where the code segment is, you all of a sudden lose, lose what your program is. And of course, you cannot move uh, um, anything into uh, uh, oh oh you 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 cannot uh, uh, assign immediate values to to s segments either, uh, and uh, these are just simple restrictions. Of course, you have to you have to be able to write the code segment register in some way. You have to be able to write the instruction pointer in some way. But for for the code segment, for example, you you use a pop a push or a pop, a push and a pop. For uh, in instruction pointer, of course, you use a jump instruction. That's exactly what that is. And so this here uh, uh, is uh, some, uh, some types of moves that are not, not valid. This has to do actually with um, the size of the operands are not compatible. Here we're talking about a byte, and this is a word. See, this is a word. And so we're trying to move a, this is, this is an assembler. The assembler is going to catch this. You're trying to move something that's a word into a byte. You're trying to move something that's a byte into a word. And you're trying to move something that is a byte into an extended word. So here, um, uh, we're, we're to explain why each of these move statements are is invalid, and uh, the first one we're trying to move immediate this value forty five into this into a segment register, the data segment register. It's not legal. Uh, this is a type mismatch. We're trying to uh, move a word, a word, no w. Yeah, we're trying to move a word into a e s i e means it's a it's a double word, so it's a. Uh, 16-bit value into a 32-bit 
value. Uh, this is a, um, a double word value, which is 30, 32 bits uh, into an immediate, this, this means we're trying to write into that place in the code, which doesn't make sense. You can't write into, into the code. Here we're trying to do a memory to memory from this one to this one, and we can't, there's no, um, the uh, Intel 86 architecture uh, does, does not um, support that. <clears throat> uh, there's something called zero extension and sign extension, and this has to do with, with when you do want to move uh, a smaller operand, smaller sized operand into a larger sized operand. And so let's say we're moving a byte here into a word. Uh, well, the byte is, is only eight bits. And so we're gonna move it into the lower, the lower uh, eight bits. But what do we put in the upper eight bits? Um, if the destination is 16 bits, presumably we're gonna start you know, dealing with words. And so we would want the upper eight bits to be zero. So if the, with this move ZX instruction, it, it does the move, this move, but then it loads zeros into the upper um, byte. <clears throat> and there's a sign extension, which uh, as you know, assigned, assigned uh, values, uh, if it's negative, it's two's complement notation. The, the upper bit is gonna be a one if it's a negative number. And uh, if, if it's an 8-bit negative number, it's like this. But when we, when we move it, uh, we need to extend the sign. So this, whatever the value is in the upper, um, in the highest order bit of the 8-bit eight, byte is going to be extended all the way across. So if this was a 0, it would be zeros extending across. If this, was, if this is a 1 in this example, so it's 1s extending across. Uh, Exchange instruction is uh, is an instruction that helps you do um, you know exchanges in higher level languages. Again, though, you cannot exchange a memory with a memory, but you can exchange a memory with a, with a register uh, in in both directions. So you still need a temporary location when you're when you're uh, exchanging two operands, uh, but you only need one register to do it. So here uh, we've got. Um, this example exchanges two registers. So what, whatever was in AX is gonna be in BX, and whatever was in BX is gonna be in AX. This exchanges the upper byte and the lower byte of the accumulator. <clears throat> this exchanges uh, a register with memory, <clears throat> and this exchanges um, two 32-bit registers. Uh, this is not legal because it's got two memory operands. And uh, we have what are, uh, for, for addressing, we have a, a constant offset can be added to a data label to produce a, a new, a different effective address. Uh, the address is dereferenced, which means it's converted back into its direct uh, absolute value uh, to be able to grab what's in the memory location. So in this case, we've got a array of bytes and uh, we want to load the address of the array plus one, which we're talking about this one now, this is the plus one. We, we wanna load that value into the lower accumulator. And so the lower accumulator is gonna get that value 20. <coughs> um, this does the same thing. It takes the, uh, the address of whatever array B is, which is right there, it takes whatever that address is, adds one to it. So array B is just pointing to that one. So adding one to it points to this one and that value is put into AL. <coughs> um, <coughs> this is uh, the reason, of course, this is because when we do, when we're referring to a, array B, we're not referring to the value that's in array B, we're referring to the, at the address uh, a, array B. <coughs> All right. Um, uh, to continue here, uh, um, w with words, we have um, 
here, for example, we're going to move the location of array W, which is which is pointing to this word right here. But we want to add two to it. And remember, a word is two bytes. So uh, adding two to it will now point to this one, which is what we want. So we this is going to put this value into AX. And that's what it shows here. Uh, going, going four, which is two, four, this one is going to put uh, this value into AX, like that. <clears throat> and uh, here we're doing double words. So this is plus four. Uh, remember, double words are four bytes, so plus four is just the two here. So that's why it puts two into the extended accumulator. Hmm. I think that these will assemble, but when they run, um, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. Uh, this, this is going to uh, try to load whatever was before array W, and this is going to load whatever array D is uh, for, for uh, this is um, uh, 0, 4, 8, 12, 16 would be whatever is out here. Who knows what, what's out there? Um, Again, though, this is, this is an example of why assembly language, you yeah, really have to be careful because, you know, you can be accessing somebody else's code and messing with it, whatever. <clears throat> All right. Um, these are my notes from before. Let me uh, erase this. All right. So... Um, <clears throat> Write a program that rearranges the values of, of, the, of the three double words. Okay, we're messing around with these exchange, with the exchange instruction here. And so, so uh, we want to arrange this array, one, two, three, into three, one, two. So basically, we're going to put uh, the three, the three goes into the one, the one goes into the two, and the two goes in. The two goes into this. The, the one goes into the second location, and the two goes into the third location. So the first thing we do is we copy. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy the first value. Okay, so we're going to copy the first value, which is the one, and we're going to put that into the EAX register, and then we're going to exchange it with the second position. Okay, so this thing takes. This thing takes the uh, the one and puts it into EAX, and this uh, exchanges. These are double words, so plus four is going to be the is going to be the two. So this is going to um, exchange. The one is going to go into the second position. And these whatever is in the second position is going to go into the into um, where the one is. So uh, so after this is over, uh, EAX uh, is going to equal um, two, and position two is going to equal one. And uh, so, and, and two, two is going to be in here. So then we're going to um, exchange the third position with the two. And so this will put uh, two into the third position. And it'll put uh, what was in the third position, the three. The three is going to go into the um, accumulator, into EAX, and uh, then this last move is going to put EAX into the first position. So it's going to end up like that. You can go through it yourself and, and confirm confirm that that works. But but this is the kind of thinking and the kind of programming that you need to do uh, when you're dealing down here here in assembly language because it just can't do much. So you got to break things down into uh, much simpler steps 
than you're used to with higher level languages. Okay, right, uh, we want a program that adds the following three bytes. So, um, <clears throat> um, So you can go through this. So this this takes uh, 80 and puts it into the lower accumulator. This adds, th this puts that into the accumulator. This adds that and this adds that. Uh, and this, this is different because uh, M bytes is a one byte and we're moving it into the AX register, which is a word. This is a byte going into a word. This is another byte adding to a word, another byte added to a word. I'm not sure what'll happen. You can run it and see what happens, but I think um, it might not assemble. Uh, here where we've got these bytes, wait a second. Yeah, here we've got some bytes again. And uh, here we were moving um, the first one into the AX register and we are, we are zero extending it. And uh, here we are um, moving 66 into B, the lower B. And here we're adding, um, AX to BX. Now, we don't know what was in the upper BX. We don't know what was in the upper of BX. So, no telling. Um, this is going to put a, 0, A5 into the lower BX. I'm not sure what this is going to be. Move 0 into, oh, oh th this is showing an error. We have to move 0 into, into BX before we do this because we don't know what's in BH. Okay, let's talk about addition and subtraction. Uh, these are various addition and subtraction. Um, uh, let, me, let me just check here real quick to make sure that everything is fine. Oh good, I am recording. Uh, in the simplest form, we've got increment and decrement instructions. That just adds one to a value or subtracts one from a value. We can, uh, add or subtract there's a negate instruction which uh it make turns um you know makes a uh a positive number uh, uh negative or a negative number positive uh we're going to look again at implementing arithmetic expressions and uh and then we're going to look at the flags that are affected when we do arithmetic so the increment and decrement instructions are very simple. Simply, simply adds one or subtracts one from a, a destination operand. And a destination operand can be a register or a memory location. And so here's examples. Um, well, uh, incrementing, okay, depending on the type of word, uh, here we're incrementing a 16-bit a word. So it's that, it's gonna become that. Here we're decrementing the 16-bit word, it goes back to uh, um, 1000. Uh, here we're incrementing a double word, which uh, treats, so it's incrementing a larger huh, word. Here we're moving uh, 00FF into the AX register and then we're incrementing it, looks like that. Here we're moving uh, it into the uh, AX register, but we're not going to increment AX. We're only incrementing the lower, the lower part of the AL register, and so we see just this. Um, let's see. Oh, we put we started out with FF, and so so FF just goes to zero zero, but there's no carry into the next next uh, position like there is in this one. That's why it ends up being just that. Okay, you can go through these and uh, confirm that you you understand that. Uh, for addition and subtraction instructions, um, it, it's like what you'd think. Uh, and there, the format is the sa same as move. Uh, the rules are the same as move, except for you're not just moving something over, you're actually adding adding it. And here you're subtract subtracting 
you know, you're subtracting source from the destination. Same, same as, as with the move instruction. And so here's some, here's some examples. Uh, uh, first, we're going to move this into the EAX register. Then we're going to add this to the EAX register, which ends up being this. And then we're going to add uh, this to the EAX register, which ends up like this, of course. And then we're going to add one. It's going to end up like this. Subtract one ends up like this. We're talking E. Subtract X. Yes. Uh, th this does not change because we're just doing uh, 16 bits, which is just this lower part here. So the zero gets decremented by one, which makes it FF and there's no carryover. The, the negate instruction simply uh, takes a positive number and makes, makes it the negative version of, it, of itself or the opposite. Uh, and um, so, you know, there's, you know, it kind of gets funny around, this is um, for a 16 bit number, this is like, one zero this is like one zero 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 so uh uh this is a funny number because if we negate this uh the way you you negate something is is one way of negating is you can subtract it from zero or you can just uh reverse all the bits and then add one to it, and you're gonna end up with the same thing back again. That's the point here, so it's, <clears throat> it's not, it doesn't make sense. Uh, now, uh, there's flags. We have to pay attention to flags, and, and these are, the flags are used because uh, we're gonna do jump instructions based on what the value of the flags are. So we're gonna do some test, and it's gonna do something with the flags, and then based on the results of the test, based on the values of the flags, we're going to jump. And you can jump on any kind of flag for any, any kind of reason or anything. So it's very, 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 very flexible. And as an assembly language programmer, you have to become clever at uh, uh, when to use what flag to consider what kind of jump and so on. So, uh, so when it does the negate instruction, really it's, we're doing this, subtracting the operand from zero. And so any non-zero operand is going to cause the carry flag to be set. So, uh, you know, here, here we're, we end up with zero, so nothing is set, uh, and so on. So you can, uh, so the carry flag is when, uh, is when there's a carry out of the operand. <clears throat> Um, here's implementing uh, an arithmetic expression. We sort of looked at this uh, previously, uh, how we, um, how you convert this into an assembly language program. And, you know, we need to um, use the registers and so on, temporary values. Uh, this is an example of you can, you can do this exercise. Uh, okay, so the flags affected by, by arithmetic the arithmetic logic unit has a number of status flags. And uh, there's the essential ones are zero flag, sign flag, carry flag, and overflow, overflow flag. And um, zero flag is when the result ends up being zero. Sign flag is just the, the upper highest order bit of the result. Uh, carry flag is when there's a carry out. There would be a carry out of the highest order bit. And an overflow flag is kind of weird. It's um, it is the um, if the second of the highest bit and the highest bit are different, then that overflow flag is set. If they're the same, the overflow flag is clear. And uh, just as an aside here, move instructions are never affected. They know they don't affect the flags. So this is a concept map he's drawn. I've never really seen concept maps before, but. Um, but but we've got an ALU here that does does arithmetic uh, and logic functions, and uh, it can do these kinds of operations. And when it does something, it affects a status flag. Uh, and then conditional jumps 
uh, 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 are conditional on status flags. And there's lots of different conditional jumps condition, conditioned on many different kinds of status flags. And so this is how you provide branching logic in your code. So the zero flag is set when the result of an operation produces a zero destination operand. Set means one, uh, clear means zero. A sign flag is set when the destination operand is negative. It's, it's clear when it's positive. It's basically just a copy of the destination's highest order bit. Um, now, uh, signed and unsigned uh, integers, uh, the CPU doesn't really see any difference. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so, a CPU can't really distinguish either. So, so we as a programmer need to uh, be responsible for this detection, and that's what these these flags help us do. That uh, the overflow and the carry flags. Um, this is you can read through this, and it's it's, it's a little confusing. Um, if you were going to be um, a, a microprocessor chip designer, you would need to understand this uh, um, really really well uh, how to derive this kind of stuff. But um, you as a programmer. Um, only need to know what these flags are used for. Um, and so uh, the, the, carry, the carry flag is set when the result of an operation generates an unsigned value that is out of range. So we've got, we're doing bytes here and we, um, we have a value in there and it's, it's FF and we add one to it and it overflows. It, the result is gonna be zero. Um, really, it ends up being when you add FF uh, plus one, you get zero, zero, carry one, one hex. But we're only doing bytes, and so it can only fit in those two. So that's why we've got the carry flag there. And the same thing happens if you go below zero, okay? That's so you can think of this as the borrow flag because it's borrowing, so it's in subtraction, you know, you borrow. And uh, so, so you can go through this, and, and as we go along, we can look and think and notice that the sign flag, what the sign flag is going to be, the zero flag, and what the carry flag will be. Uh, the overflow flag is when the signed result of an operat operation is, diff is invalid or, or out of range. So it's, it's uh, more useful with signed, signed values. And it ends up being um, the exclusive or of of um, of the of the of the um, the carry flag and the and the uh, value that goes from the second of the highest bit to the highest bit. When adding two integers, remember the over flag is only set when two positive operands are added and their sum is negative. See, that's, a, that's an overflow. When two negative operands are added and their sum is positive. Right, that's not really possible either. So uh, that's the overflow flag. If the overflow flag is ever one, then you know that that's happened. So then your, your um, result is not val valid, maybe. So here's some, uh, you can do these exercises here. Okay, data related operators and directives. Okay, so these are more assembler type things. Uh, these are directives to the assembler, uh, and we'll learn what these mean. So the offset operator, it's, it's just the word offset, and it's gonna return the distance uh, in bytes of a label from the beginning of an enclosing segment. So um, now, this is a little bit confusing because, for example, here, uh, let's assume the data segment begins at, at 00404000, uh, and uh, we're going to move the offset. Let's say the data segment starts there. So this, this says the offset returns the distance in bytes of a label from the beginning of an enclosed segment. So, so I would think that if this is wherever this is, uh, this point here is just going to be this distance. 
uh, but it's not clear with, with, with this example. And uh, we aren't far enough along in our coding to be able to just whip up a assembly language program to test this out. But when, when, we, when we are, which is probably you know, next week or something, we will take a look at this to, to figure out exactly what value, what value uh, goes into ESI. Turns out it doesn't matter because the way we use it, uh, whichever way uh, it is, it, it works. And so um, uh, here, here we're loading um, um, we're loading uh, the offset of BVAL, uh, it, it, and, and this ESI ESI is going to be an address which. Uh, points to or addresses a variable out in, in memory, uh, which is going to be an operand. And so, um, it, okay, second, there's a pointer operator. And you use a pointer operator to get around uh, trying to do things with different kinds of operands, with, with you know, bytes, bytes and words, or words and double words, or whatever, and you want to move move some values around and something's defined as a word, but you want to um, load, load something into an AX register. And so you want to load just like one, two, three, four into an AX register. Actually, it's not going to do that because of little ending order. Because when this is defined like this, really it's, it's, it's stored 78, uh, 56, 34, 12, because it's a little endian. This is the this is the lowest order, the second lowest order, the third order, and the highest order. And so when we load whatever is here, when we load that as a word, it's just gonna be uh, this. It's gonna be 5678. And that's why it's 5678. Here, we're uh, loading, we're storing this value, 4321, into a word that is pointed, is at, which is at this address. So again, it's, it's this right here, and we're going to store uh, 4321. So the 21 gets stored there, and the Four three gets stored here, and this again uh, reviews little Indian order, and it's how it's stored. One two three four five six seven eight is stored uh, the highest order, the second highest order, the third highest order, and the lowest order. Turns out that when you're looking at it in memory, it kind of looks different. It looks weird. That's all. You got to keep that straight in your head when you're. When you're writing code and you're debugging code and you're looking at these listings and you're looking at these numbers and you're saying what the heck is this and you got to remember oh it's it is it it's in little indian order are we talking about words or double words or, or whatever so here here is a diagram which explains a little bit more of this pointer operator and again the pointer operator just lets you override uh what the defined type of of uh of variable or operand is out in in memory so so we've got a double word here which is 32 bits and we want to treat them as bytes and here we're treating them as words and and starting at these addresses wherever these are and you remember when we're talking about uh, an address here and we add something to it these are always bytes we're adding this is two bytes this is one byte this is two bytes so we're always so these never change, but so uh, well here we're going to my double plus two, which is which is zero one two, which is this one fifty six, and we're no plus zero, oh plus zero oh, plus two is this sorry zero. One two, so it's thirty four. Oh wait, that's not right either. Uh, 
uh, well, anyway, I'll look at this later. I, I don't think that's my double. We're adding two bytes onto, let's see, because my double is zero. Oh, never mind. We got to remember it's little endian. So really this is stored 78, 56, 34, 12. And so I was, so this is my double plus two is my double, my double, my double plus one, my double plus two, which is 34, which is what this is. All right, okay. Uh, pointer operator continued. This is more of the same, the CPU uh, automatic loop versus the bytes when it loads it in. And uh, we can look at this. The type operator just returns the size of the operands. Uh, it's called type because, you know, um, a one is one means bytes, two means words, four means double word, eight means quad word, and th those are the number of bytes for each of those. And so type you can think of, of it's called type. So here, uh, here, uh, this this evaluates to one. This evaluates to two. This evaluates to four because this is four bytes and this evaluates to eight because this is eight bytes. The length of operator counts the number of elements in a single de 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 declaration. So, uh, so it has to do with arrays. So let's say we're, um, we're defining byte one as this byte array, which is three bytes. So length of it's gonna be three. Here we've been defining a word array of 30 words plus two more. So that's why it's 32. So, so the length of is the number of elements, not the number of bytes, the number of elements. Okay, so here we're, we're talking double words. This is gonna take up um, four times, you know, this is gonna be six, uh, 16 bytes, but really it's only four elements because each element is a double word. So that's length of, and then size of is bytes. So the size of, you take, you take the length of and you multiply it by the type and you get the size of. So size of, we're talking about bytes. Length of, we're talking about elements. Spanning multiple lines. Okay, so if we want to declare something, here we're declaring a word array and it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and it's a word, so length is going to be six because it's six elements, but it's going to be 12 bytes. I mean, uh, but when we do it this way, we're not doing that way because there's no comma, no comma. So uh, we're only talking about array is only this first thing. These other two are just there. Uh, a, a, a label directive um, allows us to um, identify um, or to, to know what the, what the actual address is of a, of a particular location. So for example, um, we've got a byte array right here. It's called int list and it's four bytes. And at the same location, which is this at the same location we've got something called word list and it's it's words and at the, also at the same location we've got a dw list which is a double word so all of these addresses point to this first address right there but this the in list is referring to these as bytes four bytes word list is referring it as to two words and dw list is referring it to as one double word. See, so, so when we do these move instructions here, then they will work because we're moving a double word into a double word, we're moving a word into a word, and we're moving a byte into a byte. All right, indirect addressing. So uh, for indirect addressing, uh, we have indirect indirect operands and in for that a value in an index register for example um, uh, uh, when we're moving something instead of instead of the address uh, instead of the value that we're moving is what we're, is the value we want to move 
it, it is the uh, the value is an address to what we want to move. That didn't that wasn't very clear, but, but let me try to explain it here. Uh, so we've got it holds the address of the variable. So and there there's this thing dereferencing here. So so here uh, we're moving uh, whatever this address of this thing is into uh, into ESI, and then here we want to move the at what is where where ESI is the actual address. So so here we're moving not the value of ESI. We're not moving the value of ESI into AL. We're moving the value that ESI points to into AL. ESI is an ad contains an address. It contains the address of the byte that we want to put in AL. And then we, we increment ESI. So now that address is pointing to the next position, which is going to be this one. And when we move that one into AL, we're getting 20. And then we do the same again, and we're getting the next one, 30. So, uh, and, and we can use uh, the pointer uh, um, declaration to clarify the size of the operand, size of the attribute. So here we're doing, um, uh, we're, we're moving this address into ESI. We're, we're incrementing ESI, so we're adding one to it. So now it's pointing to, um, to, if this is a word, it's pointing to the, the lower, the s high order byte of this word. Um, anyway, um, oh, this is ambiguous. So, oh, we have to say that it's a pointer that we're pointing to so it knows uh, how, um, how much to increment by. Should the pointer be? Okay, so. Um, Oh, oh, this is because we have the address, but we don't know whether or not actually uh, let's let's move on this we'll explain it easier later. Indirect operands are ideal for traversing an array. Note that the register brackets may be uh, must be incremented by a value that matches the array type. So so we have an array here. It's got uh, three words in it. And we're going to load the address of the first beginning of the array into ESI. And then we're going to move um, uh, the, the we're, well, we're moving the um, uh, word pointed to by ESI into the X register. And then we are incrementing the ESI register by two to point it to the next word. And then we are um, adding what is pointed to by ESI to AX. So now we, we've got 2000 hex plus 1000 hex. And then we add um, two to ESI again, because so that's pointing to the next word. And then uh, we add what's pointed to there to AX. And so it's gonna be the sum of this array. There, so AX is gonna include the sum of that array. All right, indexed operands. An indexed operand adds a constant value to the register to generate an effective address. So this is like even uh, more indirection here. Uh, so so uh, it, it's got two notational forms. It's just the address of the label plus the value of the register, uh, or it's, or you can refer to it this way. So it's the value inside the register uh, offset by the label. So here we've got this array W, three words again, and we're gonna load zero. See, so here we're loading zero into ESI because ESI is gonna be like an index. Uh, whereas in this case, ESI was the actual address itself. So here we're just learning the index, and then we take this zero index and add it to array W to get the first one. And then we, um, this, oh, this, these two are the same. Uh, these two do the same thing. 
uh, we add two to ESI, so now ESI is equal to two, and then we we uh, we add uh, we add the value that's pointed to by array W plus two, which is this one, to AX, and so on. Uh, you can scale an indirect or indexed operand to the offset of an of an array element. This is done by multiplying the index by the array's type. See, so um, so so we've got an array of bytes, array of words, and array of double words. So this is going to be six bytes. This is going to be twelve bytes, and this is going to be twenty-four bytes because of the size of the words. And so, if we move i into uh, to uh, ESI, uh, and so the fourth one. So we're talking about the fourth one. Uh, starting counting at zero. So here, th this is the scaling business. So first, we're going to worry about moving bytes into the into this AL register. So we take ESI, which is four, multiplied by the type of this, and the type is is just going to be one because the type of an array, a byte type of a byte is one, the type of a word is two, and the type of a a double word is four. So we're multiplying that by the index to get the offset from D. So each time we are addressing the four here. That's why it looks like that. All right, pointers, you can declare a pointer variable that contains the offset of another variable. So uh, here, um, this uh, pointer W, pointer W is a, it's a D word, it's a double word that contains the offset, contains the value of, of array W. So here we're, we're uh, so, so this is an actual address value, okay? So this is, the, the, okay, so um, this is not, uh, pointer W does not, well, pointer W does actually point to that value. Okay, so here we're loading. This is going to be um, like indirect addressing. So we're pu putting the address of array W into ESI, and then we are using that. Uh, we're loading the value that's at the address pointed to by ESI into AX. So that's why this gets that value. Yeah, this this is I like this better because it's more clear. All right, uh, jump and loop instructions. So for there's uh there's two basic kinds of jumps. Well, there's conditional jumps too, which we'll get to later. But there's a plain old jump instruction which jumps absolutely. Uh, a a loop instruction uses the uh, a counter register to where it tests it decrements the counter register, and if it's not zero, then it jumps. If it is zero, it doesn't jump, it passes on through. And we'll, we'll do a summing an integer uh, example and a copy string example. All right, so uh, a, a, jump, a jump is an unconditional jump to a label that's usually within the same procedure. So, uh, so like jump target, you know, it, all the jump instruction does is take the address that's, this, this value is an address, and it puts that into the EIP register, and that that effectively is a jump. It, it puts it into the instruction pointer. So this thing, uh, when this thing executes, the next instruction that is executed will be right this one right here. Uh, and a loop instruction is uh, is a similar kind of thing, except for it it first decrements the ECX register by one. And if that's not zero, then it jumps. Otherwise, it doesn't jump. It just passes it on through. Also, uh, this target is actually a relative address. So it's relative of this, of wherever the, this location is. So when, when you assemble it, you can look at that and see. Uh, here's, here's an assembly. And what we're doing is we're jumping from here back up to here, okay? So, so we're just doing this add instruction a bunch of times. 
And so this, and this is what the assembled machine code looks like. So the move zero into AX looks like that. It moves this immediate value of zero into the AX register. This is what the a move AX does. This moves five into the ECX register. That's what this instruction does. This thing adds CX, to, the value in CX to the AX register. That's what this does. And then this, this, this decrements the CX register. If it's not zero, it jumps back to execute this instruction again. It jumps back to L1. And so, so, so it computes an offset from this location back to this location. Well, that offset is FB. It, the F, it's, it's, it is, this is a, a negative number. So uh, FB is not, is a, um, let's see, uh, FE is minus one, no, FF is minus one, FE is minus two, uh, B, say, oh, wait a minute. Um, oh, oh, it's it, it's actually from the from the next location. So um, FB is okay, FE is minus one. F this down. FF FE FD FC FB. This is minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. Okay, so this is minus five. So, uh, so this means jump back, uh, jump, jump back five places. Well, uh, the, when, when this thing is executing, the program counter is pointing to E. That's what the program counter is, E. So we're subtracting five from E, which brings it back to this location. Okay, E minus five. Here, um, F A F nine F eight. Okay, E E minus five is one two three four five. Yeah, nine. Okay, so anyway, that's how that works. Zero E plus F B equals nine. Because F B is actually minus five. All right, you can. Um, you can see what the maximum jumping forward and jumping backward is. It's the maximum you can jump forward is uh, 127 bytes. Backwards is 128 bytes. So you can uh, do these in your head. Loop here. Uh, here's, here we're loading in zero into ECX. And then we do this loop thing each time decrementing. Uh, so, so we decrement E. Uh, e C X and so that goes it goes from zero goes from zero to F F whatever F F F F F F F and that's not zero so it keeps on going. It turns out it's gonna loop this many times because this is two to the 32 power. And so but basically this loops from F F F F F F F F all the way down to zero 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 is that many. Uh, I mean, of course, we can have nested loops, but when we do have nested loops, we have to keep track of this counter ourselves. So, so we've got this loop here, which loops 20 times. We've got this outer loop here that loops 100 times. But you notice that before we go into this inner loop, we need to save out. We need to save what the outer loop counter is. And then here we put the outer loop counter back and we to, to do the loop to do the outer loop. See, so we actually have to keep track of these counters when we do these kinds of things. There's only one of them. And here's an example of summing an integer array, and we do it by by looping L1. We're gonna do four of them, so we we want to uh, load into the counter, the length of the array. So it's gonna be four, okay, not size of, but length of. So it's one, two, three, four. Length of, that goes, four goes into there. So this is gonna loop four times. Each time we're incrementing uh, by the size of an array element. And so that's how that works.
All right, copying a string is pretty similar, except for we're, we're using the same, say, so here we got a source. This is the string we're copying. We're just gonna copy it over right here. And uh, we can use, um, we can use uh, indexing where source is where the source array is and target is where the target array is. And each time we are using ESI, the same uh, index variable because we're moving the zeroth element to the zeroth element and then the first to the first, the second and second, third and third and so on. And we're using AL because we're just doing bytes. We only need one byte. All right. And next is 64-bit programming. This is real quick. Uh, it's basically, it's as you would expect. When we extended back, when we had the AT80 AT series and the, or the 8008 series, those were just 8-bit machines. We went to 16 bits with the 8086, the 86 architecture. Uh, we, we extended from AL and AH to, to AX. And then when we went to the 32-bit architecture, we extended it again and from 16 bits to 32 bits and we had to add some stuff. And then we went from, now we're going from 32 bits to 64 bits and it's the same kind of stuff. It, 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 it all makes sense. The, uh, the move instructions work. Um, uh, when you move into a bigger, a bigger uh, when you move into 64 bits, the upper bits of the destination are cleared. Um, when you move a memory operand into a 64-bit register, it can vary. It either clears the high bits, or if it's eight or 16, it doesn't do anything. And uh, there's a move uh, SDX, which extends 32 bits to 64 bits, as you'd expect. The offset operator works. The, uh, the loop uses a 64-bit uh, uh, register as a counter, so it can do way, way more. And, uh, and there's a couple of extra registers here to extensions of these registers. So you can uh, do uh, indexing, more indexing. Uh, the add and subtract instructions uh, affect the flags the same way as it does in 32-bit modes. You can use scale factors similarly. So uh, this is a summary of what we've done. Um, we've uh, talked about the data transfer instructions, Sign extension, the exchange instruction, different operand types, should understand all these. Uh, the arithmetic instructions, increment, decrement, add and subtract, and negate. And we'll get into multiply and division and dividing later. Uh, the sign bits are important. That's what we look at when we're doing these calculations to, to uh, test for jumps. There are these, uh, these operators that, the, that only the assembler understands uh, to help us um, when when we're dealing with, uh, with different operand types. And then we did talk about the jump in the loop instructions. So um, that uh, pretty much takes us through chapter four. And uh, so uh, we'll do a chapter, we'll do a uh, chapter five video soon. Thanks for watching.